what's going on guys today we're going to talk about how can you get whatever you want now this is a very big topic that i'm probably going to touch on in a few videos but here's the thing how do you get what you want in life and this corresponds to starting a business starting relationships starting whatever how do you get what you want now this is the first stance of the first leg of the journey and i'm going to tell you some stories first of all you got to know what you want this is the critically the most important aspect of setting all of this up you must 100 percent be very clear on what you want now this is where things get to be a little dicey many people like the stance of keeping your options open keeping things on the table not making a very strong or direct commitment to any one thing and this creates a problem because my thoughts on that why people want to be in a position where everything's open everything's on the table they have a ton of options this comes from a scarcity mindset now let's talk about the scarcity mindset the scarcity mindset is there's not enough whatever you want in the world so you want to be in the position where you have all of these juicy and choice options versus buckling down, working hard, and putting together something concrete. The scarcity mindset comes, and this is not a knock on your parents, but many of us just didn't have the best parents, and we grew up in an environment of lack, an environment of need, an environment of want so we grow up and we become these adults that initially we have a very wide lane of scarcity we didn't have enough money we didn't have enough food we didn't have money for toys we didn't have money for trips these scarcity mindset that is inoculated in you as a child stays with you as an adult unless you work on it and this is one of the reasons that so many people walk around with the scarcity mindset, walk around having a situational, positional frame of scarcity. Like one of the things that you would hear that money is scarce. You would literally hear this, that money's hard to get, money's scarce. You would have many people out there struggling to make money. Here's the thing, virtually everyone that you know including the homeless people on the streets, have some money. They may not have a lot of money, but they have some money. Money, in fact, is not scarce. Let me say that again. Money is not scarce at all. Money is very plentiful. Money is quite abundant. And if you align your thinking with that fact, all right, let's have a little conversation here. Money is abundant there is no scarcity of money i want you to get in your car after this video after you have subscribed after you have hit the bell notification thingy and after you watch this video two or three times i want you to get in your car and just drive around your city and unless you live in a very poor isolated area there are those areas that could be the case but if you live in a near a major metropolitan city, you will just get in your car and drive through your city and you will see skyscrapers going up. You will see cranes, you would see commerce, you would see activity, you would see business, you would see a lot of things going on that on the internet you would hear that the world is crumbling. Take this thing with the real estate crash. We're not having a real estate crash. But if you come to the internet and you listen to these people putting out video after video of these video of the real estate is going to crash here, it's going to crash here. When real estate has gone up 45% and it comes down 3% or it only appreciates 3%, that is not a crash. But there are many people who are hoping, and I'm going to explain to you why they're hoping for a real estate crash. They're hoping that the price of real estate 
crashes so they can afford some. That's what they're hoping for a crash. They're hoping that these houses will go down 50%, cause a big real estate crash and simply not have it because we have, and this is true facts, true real life information. We have a situation where we have a housing shortage. We just don't have enough houses to go around. And this is why in the broader, more metropolitan areas, you're seeing some people getting into bidding wars on certain properties because there's not enough real estate. And this is one of the things that I should bring up about getting what you want. There's a few different types of people in the world. There are people who live on the internet, there are people who live in the real world, and there are people who live in the real world but use the internet. I'm one of the thirds. I am live in the real world, but I use the internet. And one of the things that you will see is there is a proliferation of people who are using the internet to get what they want, to make money, to build up their wealth by actually pushing false, untruthful, unrealistic information. And it works. If you want to make a lot of money really quickly, and I'm talking about this year, start a real estate crashing channel, start the stock market crashing channel, start a cryptocurrency crashing channel, because there's a bunch of people. And here's where the title of this video merges with mainstream. There are a ton of people out there who don't have any money, who don't have any positioning, who don't have anything going on in their lives from a bank, from a positional standpoint. And what the people who live in the real world, because once again, these people who are on the internet, many of them live in the real world and they use the internet to make money. So these people have a firm understanding of what's really going on. These guys know what's really going on, but it doesn't matter because we have a huge number of people who are living on the internet and they get all their information, they get all their news, they get all their lifestyle choices from the internet. So it's a big pool of people that you can use to make a crazy amount of money by just not being 100% honest. Once again, honesty is a big part of getting what you want. You need to know who you are. You need to understand who you are. You need to know what's going on. And I'm getting ready to tell you a very interesting story. The story has two parts. First of all, the first part was me being a very young man enlisted in the United States Army trying to start a business. And I knew that I wanted to start a business. That I knew. But what type of business? What component of a business? What that I had no clue. And that was the big reason that I was really unsuccessful in starting the business. I tried not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times I tried to start a business when I was in the military. And it never worked out because I had that primary function of, I want to start a business so I can make some more money. That I knew, but what I didn't know, because I was in that state of being active, being engaged, making money, trying to do things. What I didn't understand is the components of a business. So five times I tried, five times I failed. I didn't make any money. And then this happened. I went on with my life. Things happened in life. And then I started writing, which was very much a passion of mine. I was deeply drawn to writing. And for many years I wrote, but I never really put anything together because I didn't understand the formal process of how to write a book, how to start a book. Didn't understand that at that time. Then I got into business. I got into the upscale garage sale, which required me to consistently write ads for Craigslist 
And I'm talking about 100 ads a day. I went through many trials and tribulations with writing ads for Craigslist. But this is something that I did every day for years. And what happened was because I had to write these ads for Craigslist, I became indoctrinated in the process of writing. Writing became a habit. I didn't understand what was happening because I was doing it because this is how, you know, this, this is the short sample of it. I would write an ad, someone would respond to an ad, I wouldn't make money. So I was greatly induced to writing ads. And I wrote these ads for years and years and years and years. So it comes a point where that business is over. I'm at home, but I have this habit of writing. It's a habit. It's a formal, normal part of my life. So when I came to me writing my first book, it was actually easy because I had the habit of writing before I wanted to write the book. I know it sounds so simple and easy, but I'm explaining it to you, but the complexity of it is earth shattering because I had developed a habit of writing before I wrote the book. I had developed a habit of working a business before I launched my internet business. I developed this habit and it made going forward in the business so much easier than it would have been if I had just stuck to my ways and kept putting out garbage, just essentially <laughs> garbage. And when I sat down and I wrote my first book because I had the habit of writing, it only took me three months to write my first book, three months. And then I wrote some other books after that because I had the habit of writing. And what I'm trying to tell you is developing habits is much better than trying to shotgun it. You sit down, you try to do something without a habit, without a formation. And also because I had run a business, I had set up an LLC, I had managed payroll, I had managed trucks, I managed the warehouse, I managed storefronts, I managed to buy units at the auction. This put me in a very wide open position to start another business because I actually had started a successful business and this left me wide open. And essentially the Upscale Garage Sale, Conundrum Publishing, Matt Danny Media, all these companies were successful because I had developed the habit of doing the work, putting together a system of processes and habits. Once again, the system of processes, habits, and functionality of my life made it much easier for me to be successful going forward because I had developed the habits. Now, how does all this get into getting what you want in life? Number one, you must work on what you want. You must have, once again, this is why that first tenet, and this is what this video is about, that first tenet of knowing exactly what you want. Going back to when I was in the military, I knew that I wanted to start a business, but I didn't know what kind of business, I didn't know what type of business, I didn't know what type of service. I had no clue, which is the primary reason that I wasn't successful in starting a business way back then. So let's kind of go back into what happened. I got married, I got divorced, I was homeless, I started working at Renecrate, I started working at panel systems, I started working at business environments, and through those, not one, two, but three companies, I learned how to set up and run a business. See, I went from being an untrained person to a very skilled and highly trained person. At Renecrate, I learned the formal process for setting up a sales cycle which I didn't know when I was in the military. I had no clue when I was in the military. And that was extremely helpful for me to going forward to building what I built. Because here's the thing, I want you guys to stick with me and I also want you to subscribe, hit the bell notification button and watch this video three times. When I got to the process of not knowing 
and go into the situation of actually knowing. Because once again, when I came here to YouTube, I knew that I had to do things to get traffic. I knew right out the gate, I knew some of the things I had to do. I knew them because I had left a situation where I was running a business and then to move to the internet to run a business, to set up a business, to actually create something that could help people. Because here was the really funny thing about me writing the book. And if you don't know the story, my first book was supposed to be a relationship book. And then I saw something was happening. Steve Harvey wrote his book, Hill Harper wrote his book, and another guy wrote his book. And all three of these guys, except for Steve Harvey, were single. And it just hit me. I didn't want to be a single man writing a book on how to have a healthy relationship. The more that I thought about it, the more that I thought, I don't want to do that. Because from the outside looking in, it looks really terrible as a single man who's not in a long-term, loyal, committed relationship, writing a book on how to get in a long-term, committed relationship. Makes no sense. So I actually stopped that book and I had I had did a lot of stuff. I was like going out, I was talking to people. I actually had to exit a conversation with a bank teller because she really wanted to talk about relationships. And that process went on for about six months. But here's something else. Because I knew the storage auction business forward, backward, sideways, when I sat down the road every day, I came out with good content, good, reasonable things because I knew what I was writing about. I didn't have to think about it. I just had to remember what I did and put this in the book. And when you go from not knowing to a position of knowing, it's earth shattering. It literally will change your life. And this is one of the reasons that so many of these template businesses are doing so well is because people just don't know what kind of business is. What kind of business should I start? What kind of business should I start? Is the main question that so many people have, but they're not in a situation where they have enough understanding of self, of the situation, of the marketplace, of the things that are going on, where they can actually sit down and craft a business from scratch. So number one, how do we get to that point where we know? Number one, you should sit down and really, really focus on what kind of business works for you. Because there's so many people out there who are starting businesses that just for the money with little to no regard to how does that business work for them? Because there are some people who would absolutely love a Toro business. There are some people who would absolutely love an Airbnb business. And there are some people who would absolutely hate those businesses. I'm a person that would hate a Toro business. I'm a person that would hate an Airbnb business because the important constituents of those businesses, I just simply don't wanna do. Just don't wanna do. So this is some of the skill sets, what you should do. You should sit down and every day you should write. I don't care if you can write for 15 minutes, 30 minutes or an hour, you should write about you and what do you like to do and what makes you happy. Because for each and every one of you, the thing's going to be different. Like I said, we're going to have more conversations about this because this is an extremely important, earth shattering, mind bending topic. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit the bell notification, hit all, and be sure to watch this video three to four times and share it with people that you want to have better outcomes in life. And I'll see you in the next one.